Good day once again, this is Doc Dario and we're going to discuss the nervous system. Unfortunately, I don't really feel well because I'm having my asthma attack for the past few days. So if ever that this condition won't be resolved as soon as I wish it should be, maybe I'll have problems creating or recording or even uh, conceptualizing the second half of this lecture. I divide this nervous system lecture into two so that we'll have enough time and I won't be speaking that very fast, okay? Because this is quite a long topic. Also, if ever you have questions, if there are some topics which are not really clear or maybe some part, please ask me because our main goal here is for you to learn, okay? Not just for compliance sake. And if ever that you have questions that we can correlate to your to real life, that's well and that's also good because the more that the lecture is actually Im- implied, should we say that, or if it's the lecture is being used in our daily lives, the better our re- our memory memory and the faster and better we learn through it. Okay. We, it's always best that we correlate our lectures in real life. But I, I might have some examples that I want to share. Unfortunately, we don't have that enough time for, for me to do that. But if you want to have extra time, actually, it's okay even if I'm not really paid to do such. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's... Uh, also, the good thing about this nervous system, because during our assignment, the only assignment that, I, that we had... Few of you mentioned that you're quite excited to know more about the complexity of the brain. Though we cannot really lecture that all for now because this is the basic is enough for your level. But if you have extra questions or you have extra uh, inquiries, you can always ask me so that we'll have special sessions for this if you wish to. Don't worry, I won't. Even if I'm not paid <laughs> or even I'm not earning for such, as long as you're learning, I think I should be happy. We should be happy, okay? So let's start. The nervous system is one of the smallest and yet the most complex of all the 11 body system. That's my main goal, to discuss the entire the 11 body system before the semester ends. But I don't know if the time is really enough. But anyway... Uh, the nervous system is also around 2 kilograms or 4.5 pounds, about 3% of the total body weight. Okay, don't worry, I won't ask you to calculate again just like what I did during the first uh, exam that we had. Good to know a lot of you, actually, I'm not sure if sh- I should I say a lot, or but some of you had a perfect score for the muscular uh, system exam you're very amazing now you really tried your best to remember all of those so it's a gift <laughs> anyway uh, also as i mentioned no the cna uh, the, the nervous system is divided into two the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord nice to remember uh, before we mentioned about the spinal cord, it is connected to the ba- brain through the foramen magnum. Uh, I didn't mention foramen magnum because we didn't focus on the during our skeletal system about this. But I hope you can remember during our previous during your pre- previous lectures during gr- grade eleven or twelve. I'm not really sure with the curriculum, but when I tried asking few of the students right now, they said that they even discussed this, no? So it's only a review for you. That's a good thing. But that's why I really encourage you to ask questions because maybe this lecture is just so boring for some or for few. So inform me if how deep should we discuss. I want to know from your perspective, okay? Uh, but uh, I'm just making this lecture as simple as it should because I was advised to do so. I, I, I should not go very deep but not so shallow as well as mentioned. Anyway, to continue, uh, as I mentioned, no, it, it, it is connected. The spinal cord is connected to the brain through the foramen magnum of the occipital bone and is encircled by the bone of the vertebral column, which is the one that we emphasize for protection of the spinal cord, it's the vertebr- vertebral column. 
Okay? While the skull is protected by, I mean the brain is protected by the skull. The CNS processes many different kinds of informations actually more on sensory and motor. So also for right now as you listen to my lecture, as you look at the, the different new informations, your CN is, CNS or the central nervous system is functioning for us to recall this and to remember and to understand. So if also for motor, like also for stimulations of muscles and contraction of the glands, the CNS plays a great role uh, for, for doing this well, no? for, for the functioning of their entire body. So also the brain contains around 100 billion neurons, but that's not really accurate no? because some have higher level, some have lower because of some problems like pathologic issues like stroke or so. Well, the spinal cord contains about 100 million neurons. So that's the basic about the central nervous system. Now let's talk about the peripheral nervous system. The components of the PNS or the peripheral nervous system include the nerves, the ganglia, the enteric plexuses, and the sensory receptors. So a nerve, as the first thing, is a bundle of hundreds to thousands of axons Later, we'll discuss about the axons, plus associated connective tissues and blood vessels that lies outside the brain and the spinal cord. I want to emphasize this, okay? Outside the brain and the spinal cord because we're talking about the peripheral nervous system. The next one, the ganglia. It's also mentioned or it's for singular, it's ganglion. So for plural, it's ganglia. Also nice to know there are terms which are not really that uh, commonly used when we say bacteria it's plural but when we say bacterium it's singular right now they use the word bacterias but when I tried checking it online or maybe in some other references they accepted that but bacteria per se is actually a plural term bacterium is for the singular but you don't need to argue, okay? Because even scientists and even doctors use the word bacteria. So I don't know why. But anyway, sometimes I use that as well because that's the the norm or the normal way of talking now for, for now. Also, there are virus. Virus is a singular form while viri is a plural form. But still right now, we use viruses and still accepted, no? I, I don't know that the... The language or the way how we use words is very, are is quite dynamic. It changes from time to time. So let's just accept it along the way. But uh, it's nice to know there's no such word as discharges. Okay, discharge in plural or sing singular. That's the thing. No, you because I I notice a lot of doctors, even consultants or some level. No, they use the word bacteria. Maybe. Uh, I, I no 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 I mean discharges. Uh, I haven't seen any consultants, but anyway, there are some doctors who uses, uh, but the char discharges no the word discharges it's really not accurate. I don't know if there's a it's accepted right now. I'm not really sure. I'm not I'm not checking the grammar <laughs> because I also have problems with grammar. Anyway, to continue, we're done with the ganglia. Uh, it, it, did I mention, anyway, the ganglia are the small, small masses of nervous tissue and consisting primarily of neuron cell bodies that are located also at outside the brain and the spinal nerves. Because again, I want to recall, peripheral, okay? It's not a part of the CNS. Another is the enteric plexus. When we see the word, when you hear the word enteric, it always, not all the time, I think, but it involves the gastrointestinal tract, like when you say enteric uh, fever, or uh, maybe yes, it's, you know, anyway, enteric fever, it includes the GIT, no? So the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, it is, these plexus or plexus, plexuses are extensive networks of neurons located in the wall of organs of the GIT and it helps regulate the digestive system as obviously you know as the word says the sensory receptors uh, re refers to the structures of the nervous system that monitors changes in the external or internal milieu or the environment when we say milieu you no know? and uh, it includes just like for example our topic 
before, the touch receptors in our skin. That's part of the sensory receptors. The photoreceptors in our eyes. Or maybe the olfactory receptors. And there are a lot of receptors that sooner or later you'll learn. Okay? So the, those are part of the peripheral nervous system. I don't know if you could remember during the lecture that we had, during the time that the, I'm, I'm using a different platform in recording, I think it's directly from the MS team, when I mentioned about homeostasis, I also mentioned about baroreceptors, those receptors to check the internal system if there is an increased BP or so on and so forth, that's the baroreceptors. Uh, that's for the internal environment because receptors are present internal and externally. Okay, so I hope those are clear. So, which means the peripheral nervous system includes the somatic nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, and the enteric nervous system. These are subclassifications of the peripheral nervous system. So, let's discuss first the uh, somatic nervous system. This consists of sensory, the number one, no, as we mentioned, the somatic nervous system consists of sensory neurons that conveys inf information from somatic receptors in the head, body wall, and, and limbs or from receptors for special senses of vision, hearing, taste, and even smell. The motor neurons that conduct the impulses from the CNS to the skeletal muscles only is also the somatic nervous system. So when the word, the word somatic, okay? Because these motor responses can be consciously controlled. So that's why this is the term when we call the peripheral, this, this term, the entire PNS actually is more on, this part is the, voluntary so when we voluntarily do the action it's a voluntary type involuntary is when for example reflexes some points some point of that that reflex is involuntary even breathing your heart rate you don't think for you to to pump your heart no so later there are some conditions just like in breathing part if ever you have that specific conditions, you need to be very conscious on breathing in and out. But I think it's too much for us. I don't worry. I will, I will think if I'll, I'll consider that if we, we need to include that bit because I think that's quite interesting, right? Anyway, the autonomic nervous system consists of the sensory neurons that conveys information from auton autonomic sensory receptors located primarily in the visceral organs, such as for example the stomach and the lungs. And then the motor neurons, uh, the motor neurons that conduct nerve impulses from the, uh, it, uh, we're actually defining or giving information about the autonomic nervous system, okay? The impulses from the CNS to smooth muscles, cardiac muscles, and glands. Because of the motor responses are not normally under control, this part of the nervous system, no, the autonomic nervous system, that's why we call it the involuntary. No, involuntary earlier when we talk about the, the previous one, the somatic nervous system, it's more on the muscle. So it's voluntary. While the autonomic nervous system, from the word automatic for some, no, for you to remember, it's involuntary. Then obviously, uh, this, the in general, the sim the sympathetic nervous system helps support the exercises of emergency in fight or flight. Remember when the under the autonomic nervous system, we have what we call the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So sympathetic, it helps support the exercise of emergency actions. This is what we call fight or flight responses. While the parasympathetic, or uh, it takes care of the rest and digest exercises or activity, sorry. This is a picture for us to really clearly see. Uh, this is what we've been talking about, no? So also this is, actually you can see it in our textbook, the definition and the correlation of, of the different, different nervous system. No? The first box on your left 
most part is the somatic nervous system, while the second box, autonomic nervous system, the third box is for the enteric nervous system. So you can check this later as you review for you to clearly understand. Okay, so next one. What are the functions of the nervous system? Actually, sensory first one is the sensory function, the integrative function, and the motor function. For the sensory function, oh, okay, sorry. The sensory function, the sensory receptor detects the stimulus, as rem remember. Also about the word stimulus is the singular, plural is stimuli. An example of this is for ex uh, for for the case that I mentioned that if there's an increase in the blood pressure or maybe there's an external stimuli, uh, the sensory information then is carried into our brain and spinal cord through the cranial nerves and spinal nerves and then that's when our system tries to react. Also another function is the integrative function. This is the way of the nervous system to process in sensory information by analyzing it and then making decisions for appropriate actions or responses or that's why that's what we call integration. Okay? Then the motor function is once the sensory information is integrated, the nervous system may elicit the appropriate motor response by activating effectors. Remember during the one that I that we mentioned about the homeostasis, the diagram uh, the effectors usually is the muscles or the glands or maybe specific organs for a, for it to react no? through the spinal cords or nerves. And then the simulation of the effectors causes muscles to contract or glands to secrete specific hormones or enzymes for us to go back to the homeostasis or to the normal level. Or maybe if there are some threat, maybe we can, for example, I'll just give an example. Sensory function. You notice that there's a dog, dog in front of you while you were walking going back home. Then, so because of, do, uh, because of the dog, you notice that your system is, uh, had detected that it's a threat, no? Because the dog seems to be rabid. There's a rabies, no? And go moving towards you. So the thing is, uh, integrative function, the nervous system, remember, it reacts. Then the motor function is you run very fast, faster than you imagine, no? So... That's an, or for example, there is a fire, that's the sensory function is responding, no? Then later, integrative function, it analyzes everything, no? That's uh, integration of the events. And then the motor function is it includes a lot of different system, no? The fight or flight, it even uh, give adrenaline rush. That's why even during the fire event, you can carry the ref outside your home, but after the fire is already settled or everything is okay, uh, you need you need around two or three individuals to carry that thing for it to be back in your at home as in inside your house. Okay, wala na pilog sunog yung balay. Anyway, that's just an example. Maybe we can discuss that later sooner. Uh, no. So now let's talk about the. Uh, this is a nerve cell, so a neurons or a nerve cell. It this is the main component for the CNS to function, uh, the, the nervous system to function. So it possesses electrical excitability. That's the very, very uh, characteristic that that's why it's quite special. And also it for for this to function, we need a stimulus and also an action potential. And also later we'll discuss further. But if ever we have enough time, no, because this is more on the histology part. I'm just having a review, no? Just for example, as we move closer, there are three parts of the neurons. The first one is the cell body, then rights, and then the axon. Remember that during our previous, uh, your previous year level, maybe during grade 12 or 11. I'm not really sure with the curriculum good. But anyway, let's take, talk about the cell body. It is also known as the, as we call, pericarion remember or maybe in some textbook they use it or, or maybe they they term is it as soma it contains a nucleus and surrounded by the cytoplasm that includes the typical cellular organelles such as the lysosomes mitochondria so on so forth golgi apparatus maybe in some point no so that's the cell body the next one the dendrite these are the receiving or input portion of the neurons. 
So it receives, for, for example, there is an information from the higher level. It goes first to the, this is the, the, the neurons number, example number two. So it goes to the dendrite first, then it goes to the cell, the, the body, cell body, then to the axon. So I only have in, for me to remember the difference between dendrite and axon, so the dendrite is where the first information comes first because in my name, it's D for Daryl first, no? Then axon is away. I don't know, I always correlate the terms in my name because that's the thing that may be the last information that I may forget if I grow older and older my name. I, I seem to forget my age. Oh, nice to know my birthday is coming. <laughs> uh, this next month, I think, today is March. Is it February, March, April? My birthday is April. I'm not sure if today is. I think it's already March, right? Yeah, I think so. So next month. Anyway, axon away. So meaning it carries the electrical impulse away from the body. If we say dendrites towards the cell body, then it, once it goes to the cell body, it goes to the axon. So remember, axon is the longer one. Okay, this is the site of communication between two neurons. Either anyway, uh, it if the axon of the neurons propagates nerve impulses towards the another neurons later. I think I don't have that picture. I delete that. A muscle fiber or it could go to specifically to a gland if this is the last neurons then the next part which is i'll just try to move now in that part that's the time that there's uh, it will be the nerves or another nerve for another dendrite then goes to the body then axon and then or if this is the last nerve it goes to the muscle or maybe to the to the organs or maybe glands for it to do its process okay so that i think that's clear this is just type of review i think for everybody okay so have you noticed this uh, the one that i place mark no the myelin sheet it's actually a multi-layered lipid and protein covering around some axons that insulates them and then at it increases in speed, it's responsible for increasing the speed of the impulse conduction because the the next one that I labeled, the node of Ranvier, that's where the impulse jump na lang, no? So that it could go faster. If, for example, there are some nerve endings with no myelin sheet, the travel time of the nerve impulse from the from the first layer to the end of this axon is quite slower comparing it to those neurons with myelin sheet okay there are some conditions sooner or later as you move on to your career that we, we call the demyelination myelination of the the nerves thus causing movement to be slow uh, actions to be lesser no if but it's not always right when you feel like you're very slow understanding the information or you talk very slow that you really have this type of issues. But <laughs> maybe you're just tired, okay? But anyway, let's not dig too much about it. Sooner or later, you'll read about that. It's nice to correlate. So the the main the re purpose of the nodes of Ranvier, it's that's where the nerve impulses jump from one node to another to make the transition or transfer of information electrical impulse faster okay so i think we're done with the basics so as we mentioned about 100 billions of neurons is in our brain so let's be let, we will be talking about the brain alone the brain has around i think 1300 grams based on our textbook and it's around three pounds for adult okay so that's the thing. So the brain and the spinal cord develops from the ectoderm or the ectodermal neural tube. This is the one in front of you. No, it's more on the embryology of how it develops. So the anterior part of the neural tube, now the neural tube is, uh, it's more, it's quite difficult if, 
I cannot really discuss the entire embryology from the very start, no, because it's very long and you need to have the. It, I think it's best soon, you no, know, you can read this, but at least you have an idea. Uh, the good thing about your class is, despite of it's not really that familiar for you, you tend to learn, so it that's good. But anyway, let's continue because we won't finish this according to the time slot no, that I, I had. So the anterior part of the neural tube expands along with the associated neural crest tissue. Uh, constriction, when we say constriction, the narrowing, as you see, uh, during the first, focus on the leftmost picture, uh, the one that pink, yellow, and blue. There are some constriction, the narrowing. No, the constriction in the expanded tube, it appears soon around 3 to 4 weeks of the embryo, as indicated in front of you, creating three regions called the primary brain vesicles. So that's the primary brain vesicles which includes the four, maybe we, if you want the layman's only forebrain, the midbrain, and the hindbrain. But let's term it scientifically, the prosencephalon, <clears throat> the mesencephalon, and the rubi, rubi, uh, rubencephalon. Okay, so forming, uh, that's both the prosencephalon I want to mark it, but I can't, no? The, can you check? The first one, the pink one, the prosencephalon, and the rumbencephalon subdivides farther, as you see, during the fifth week after five-week embryo. So the prosencephalon divides into telencephalon, and diencephalon while the I'll just say the R okay because I can't really pronounce it well the R divides into metencephalon and myelencephalon so they subdivide after some time anyway uh, and uh, I need I think I need to tell you something for you to recall but anyway uh, the telencephalon focus on the picture okay we're on the second uh, the, the one in the fifth Five secondary, uh, I mean the five week embryo. So there are five secondary vesicles alone. Uh, try to check the label that says adult structures derived from. So the wall, if we're talking about the walls, the telencephalon will become the cerebrum, while the diencephalon becomes the thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus. Well, I just, in general, I just call it thalamus, no? For me to remember because we just place hypo, then epi. That's the, the other th term. The mesencephalon becomes the midbrain. The metencephalon becomes the pons and the cerebellum. And then the myelencephalon becomes the midulla or medulla oblongata. That's for the wall. So focus your picture, uh, your, your eyes right now on the rightmost part. That's for the cavities. So the cavities of the telencephalon becomes the lateral ventricle. The cavities of the diencephalon becomes the third ventricle later we'll know what these ventricles are i think i'll set this as your assignment then the mesencephalon becomes the the, the the cavities okay we're talking about the cavities remember becomes the aqueduct of the midbrain the metencephalon becomes the upper part of the fourth ventricle and the lower part of the fourth ventricle is from the myencephalon that's for the cavity so when we say wall it becomes the different parts of the cns when we say the cavities the different ventricles or the it's like a passageway okay i hope this is clear for you uh, it's best the reason why i include this because sooner or later you will be asked which origin no? so that's also the good thing about you knowing about this because try to observe three 
to 4 weeks of embryo. 5 weeks of the embryo, then 5 weeks after. It's also 5 weeks. It means that this is the time, during this time, the, f the first trimester is when the brain of a baby develops. Thus, we're very much particular no, as a family doctor because I also, the good thing about, I, I realize, I just want to share, I realize that some institution here, if talking about family doctors, they don't really practice everything because of, uh, like for example, in Chonghua, if you become a resident doctor there, you will be having less work because most of the other discipline will actually get your work. So learning is really not that, uh, like for example, OB. Uh, some The OB obviously will get the case of OB. Then IM will get the IM. So what's left for the FAMED, right? But uh, the good thing about my institution is we're the only residency training there. And also I have other practices. Like I only also have my online, online practice and private practice no because we're more on innovative type of practice or training so that's why we learn more or sooner or later you can decide about that no so anyway that's a nice to know uh, going back now if that's the reason why when we have consultations for ob gyne patient or for ob patient who is uh, for example currently having the Th first trimester of her pregnancy, we recommend that the patient should really take folic acid, should not take any medications which may harm the baby because that's the time that the brain may be highly damaged. Uh, because if there are some chemicals that could harm the development or could alter the development, it will really cause major impact to the way how the brain will develop or develops. Okay, so I think that's highly emphasized. No? So make sure if ever some of you are mothers and fathers, nada. <laughs> I hope wala. So take care of the first trimester, okay? Because that's the crucial part of the brain development. Nice to know also. <laughs> I'll just share this, okay? Uh, for us to have at least likayo boring atong lecture. There are some patients who asked me, uh, dog, kasi I always emphasize na mom, for the brain development of your baby, you should really take this folic acid, okay? Because it helps uh, avoid uh, it avoid mga def defect and also could make your baby's brain well developed with no problem. So, they usually ask me in Bisaya, no nga, nga so makabright de ni siya, dog, for foreign students. So, uh, so, meaning this folic acid will really help my baby to become smarter. Well, I polite, politely answer na, Mom, it's not really a guarantee that if you take this accordingly or even overdose yourself that your child will be smart. Because I think it's a dream of most of our mother, no? They want their child, children to be future doctors or maybe attorney, lawyers or so because you need intellect for us for us to, to be part of that, right? You need to be smart. So I always tell them that intelligence is developed along the way, mom. But in Bisaya, no, I think it sounds better in Bisaya. But I always tell them that if, for example, your IQ is not really that good, if ever you're, you're aminado ka, anak, no? or, and your husband is also not that excellent, I think we should not expect that folic acid will correct this thing. So... Just take it accordingly, no, to have no pathologic disorders or so. But uh, if ever, man, your your child will learn along. Uh, so choose a good foundation, education, and train them well. That's the only puhunan, no? The only, I don't know what puhunan is sa English. The only way for us to make sure that your the brain of your baby is that functional as it should or as you wish it should. Anyway, going back, let's move on. <clears throat> There are ways for me. This is my way. I called it Daryl Code. No? <laughs> I, I have a notebook before. I called it Daryl Code because I made these things up for me to remember. So I remember the, the telencephalon. The first letter is T. Then D is diencephalon. I just made TDM. So there, since there are three M's, so I placed three. And then to remember that the sequence will be mess for S, Met for the next one, so S, then T. That's why it's like Saint, no? 
for this is my way of how to remember now i'm just sharing this so that it might be helpful then the last one the last m no is my because it's myencephalon so that's what the tdm stm i m y so they're only in that way so for me to remember i always place my code so t my last name tayaban dm is daril mark that's my first name then saint mary because i like i really want to study in saint mary before in our province okay i'm actually from samar i'm waray no so uh that's because that's one of the most expensive uh, the, the, i think that's the most expensive high school before in our province so i want to feel social <laughs> I want to feel class, but unfortunately, we can't afford that during those times. So, I wasn't able to go there, out to study there. So, that's why, Tayaban Daryl Mark, St. Mary's. No, So, that's why, that's my way of remembering. Then, the other half, the other letters, is for me to uh, connect them. No, So, for the telencephalon, it should be letter C, which is the cerebellum. I cereb sorry, cerebrum. Did I mention that earlier correctly? That's uh, the letter C is the cerebrum. The letter T is the thalamus, hypothalamus, or the epithalamus, so on and so forth. No, these are the codes. C T M P C med. Med is for the mido midulla. So for me to remember that, so it's the first one is Tayaban Daryl Mark Saint Mary's. Then uh, the next half is came to Metropolitan Cebu Medicine. So, because I went here, I'm from Samar, actually. See, I'll just give a little background, no? I finished my college in uh, BSN sa Baguio City, University of the Cordilleras. If you went to Baguio, maybe if you tried going to their mall, the SM City Baguio, in front, in front, that's that mall, in front, uh, as you look at one of the sides of the view deck nila, no? there's the university, that's the school, that's my school before for nursing. Then I went back to my province again, then my mother decided to, they said my the potential is sayang if I won't continue or pursue to med school, so I'm like, okay, I'll continue. So I went here to Cebu. That's the story. So for you to remember, maybe you can make place your name instead because it's very vain no nga. But anyway, Tayaban Daryl Mark loves Saint Mary, but then came to Cebu. I mean, came to M is Metro, P is Politan, C is Cebu for med school. So I studied here in Cebu for med school. That's my way of remembering uh, the different mnemonics because, especially if there's a lot of subjects and if there's a lot to memorize, maybe. You can only remember. Unfortunately, for some case, a long, long time ago, the only thing that I could remember is the <laughs> the mnemonics, no. But I can't remember the main meaning. I hope, I hope you could. No, I think you're smarter than me, and I, I even think that you'll be a better doctor than I do. Uh, also, another advice, okay. No matter what you receive or achieve in the future, whatever career you you get. In this future, no, if you become lawyers or doctors or so, always remember that we came from humble beginnings. No, uh, don't be carried away by your professions. It doesn't make us very special if we're doctors or lawyers. No, it doesn't even make us an exclu. If, for example, there's a COVID, we're even the first one to be killed <laughs> or maybe if there are some if there's a tsunami right now in Cebu, I think the, the Lord will not really say na Lord eh, no. Uh, I mean the, whoever your creator is, no, it won't say na you will be excluded because you're a doctor or if you saya yung skulahan. No, it's not like that. So always be humble. Remember that we're all humans. Okay? Just an advice. Whether you're smarter or you're the smartest, uh, it doesn't really matter along the way. We gre we get older and older, unfortunately. And a reading assignment. Uh, read about the cerebrospinal fluid. I want to know. I want you to know and to read or to study about the functions, the formation of the CSF in the ventricles, as we mentioned, and the circulation of the uh, CSF. Then also, please read. Uh, it's also a short, short topic. The reticular formation. 
please read that. I'll, maybe I'll just ask few questions about that. It's a nice to know. Quite important as well. So now let's talk about the brain stem. So as shown in front of you, it looks like a seahorse, no? But anyway, the brain stem is a part of the brain between the spinal cord and the diencephalon. As we mentioned earlier, it consists of three structures, which is the med medulla oblongata, the pons, as labeled, no? And the midbrain. So we'll be ending the lecture until the midbrain for now, because we really only have few minutes left. So extending through the brainstem is the reticular formation, which is the net-like region of the interspersed, interspersed gray and white matter. That's the one that I want you to read later. Okay? So the first part of the brainstem is the medulla oblongata, or more simply called as the medulla. So let's call it medulla because I have a reason later. Uh, for also for you to remember but actually these uh, these ways of to remember is just for me to share you no know, for you to to have easier life uh, i don't really share that much but since i'm the teacher right now <laughs> before when i was younger i don't want to share <laughs> i was quite selfish you now because i really need to excel ac by academy uh, during my academic performance because i really need the scholarship as i mentioned we're not really we don't have much uh, until now. Maybe we have a little. Maybe, maybe we have a little, no? But uh, we don't have much. So I really need to excel uh, my academic performance because I don't know if it's also for all schools. No, if you're part of the Dean's Lister or they call it University Scholar in Baguio City and College Scholar, you have specific discounts depending on your average. So I make things like this i write it in a notebook i call it daryl code no? <laughs> unfortunately i can't make some how do you call that the one you copyrights like you own the information or the the data no i can't do that no for me to charge <laughs> for me to charge for those people who use it but anyway i think that's i forget the term that if for example a specific design is being used then you can patent it i i don't know it's other other term you can patent it and and then that's your if you see someone using it you can charge someone i'm not really sure no I, i'm i just saw that some somewhere it's a video but anyway anyway the medulla begins from at the foramen magnum and extends to the inferior border of the pons the distance is about three centimeter or around 1.2 inches the medulla's white matter contains all sensory. When we say sensory, it's ascending. Okay, nice to know. So I actually place label. Track, uh, uh, the, the track that is ascending is the sensory. So from the lower part going to the brain, it's more on the senses or it's sensory. So going up. The motor is descending. When we say motor from the brain, then you send the information to the specific muscles. That's the or organs. That's the motor. That's why if it's an ascending ascending track, it means it's sensory, while the motor track is descending track. Okay, those tracks extend between the spinal cord and other parts of the brain. Some of the white matter forms bulges, as you mentioned, the one with arrows are actually bulges on the anterior aspect of the medulla. This protrusion, as you mentioned, as you see, can you see that the pyramid, it's called the pyramids. Uh, these are form of large corticospinal cortico, uh, spinal tracts that passes from the cerebrum to the spinal cord. The, as I mentioned, no cortico, it controls the voluntary movement of the limbs and the trunk. So just superior... No, I, I think this is not supposed to be, but anyway, just appear to the junction of the medulla with the spinal cord, 90% actually of the, I, I want to place my arrow, no? The one with the decussation, no? That's the, the crossing, the decussation of the pyramid is the crossing, when we say the crossing, the switching, no? From right to left, and explains why 
each side of the brain controls voluntary movement of the opposite side of the body. Nice to know if, for example, you're a right-handed, meaning your left brain is more active than your, or more dominant, I mean, should I sh say the term? Dominant than your right, because it decussates, no? And then if you're left-handed, your right brain is more dominant than your left, because the decussate along the way, no? So that's a thing. Uh, it's only 90% because as you notice, the linear, the li can you see that? Uh, try to focus on the pyramid, the, the circle, the white spot and it being pointed by the arrow. The lower part, there's also a straight line. That's the other 10%, okay? Uh, unfortunately, I was not place. I didn't place an example here of a stroke patient or so. That was my plan, and I forgot. But anyway, m maybe if I could recall during our next the next half, maybe I'll just place an example of this. Okay. So let's move on. So that's the decusation, as I mentioned, not the one that I place on mark. So. The nucleus, as as I think I mentioned the word nucleus, is actually a collection of neural cell bodies with, within the CNS. No? So there are different medulla nuclei, no? if different nucleus in, in the medulla. The first one is the cardiovascular center, which actually regulates the rate and force of the heartbeat and the diameter of the blood vessels. Sorry, I click it. So anyway, the second one is the one responsible for the the medullary rhythmic or rhythmicity area for the respiratory centers, which is the respiratory centers that are just the basic rhythm of the breathing because it's actually involuntary. The next one is the vomiting center responsible for vomiting. No, so as mentioned, the force as defined by most of the medical books, it's actually the forcible or the forceful expulsion of the content of the upper gastrointestinal tract. Then deglutination, when you say deglut de sorry, deglutition, it means it's swallowing. So this part, the center or this nuclei is more responsible for the, it promotes the, the swallowing of mass food that moves to the oral cavity and to the mouth and to the pharynx and the earth to the throat. So that's the part. There are also some other functions of the medulla, like for example, the sneezing, which involves the, as defined, no, the spasmodic contraction of breathing muscle that forcefully expel the air through the nose and mouth. So I, as an example, for you to know that that's the sneezing. Coughing, on the other hand, involves a long drawn and deep inhalation and then a strong exhalation that suddenly sends a blast of air through the upper respiratory passages. So that's the coughing. Unfortunately, no, the, there's no action that could really represent the hiccuping, so I just place it the pa baby girl. So the hiccuping is, or the hiccups, no? Hiccuping is a is caused by the spasmodic contraction of the diaphragm. Diaphragm, as we mentioned earlier, is the muscle for breathing, remember? During the skeletal, I mean the muscular lecture. This uh, spasmodic contraction that ultimately results in the production of a sharp sound on inhalation. So it's on inhalation, okay? For the hiccuping. So uh, please read on the other nuclei which is actually in our textbook, the one that I will be sending to you later. No, uh, nice to know that within the all within the, as you can see, there's a. Sorry, I was not able to label, but on the latter lateral part of that pyramid, there is what we call the olive, and then within that olive, no, the lateral, both right and left, within that the olive is the inferior olivary nucleus, which receives input from the cerebral cortex, red nucleus, which we'll mention earlier, of the midbrain and spinal cord. The neurons of this inferior olivary nucleus actually extends their axon into the 
cerebellum, which will be discussed on the second half. And they regulate the activity of the cerebellar neurons by the inf- There's a lot of things that you need to know, but it's nice to know that this this part, the one with the red color, I'm trying to point it and then I remember that the, my marker is not really functioning. You can't really see it. So it it used to adjust the muscle activity as to learn new motor skills. So if for example, there are new motor skills that you want to develop, the the inferior olivary nucleus is the one responsible for that. Okay, that's a nice to know. Then read the other nuclei, nuclei about the, about this. It's not that many, so you can scan that along the way. So the medulla also have cranial nerves. So there are different cranial nerves of the medulla. Remember when we mentioned, uh, as I recall during our the lecture prior to this about the muscles of the eye, the extrinsic muscle of the eye, we use the different cranial nerves. That's the first time that we encounter that. But I know you know about such because during your, your previous, the previous lectures when you had your grade school, no, grade 12 or 11. The first one, the first that you can see is one of the cranial nerves is the vestibulocochlear nerve or the cranial nerve number eight. Several nuclei in the medulla receives a sensory input from and provides, uh, actually it provides motor output as well to the cochlea of the internal ear via the vestibular cochlear nerve. I have a picture later for you to see, but it's on the other part, another lecture, uh, I mean another um, part of the brain. These nerves convey impulses related to hearing. In some point, it's also responsible for balance. But I think the balance is more on the next na part of the brain stem. Don't worry, we'll discuss that again. <laughs> the next one is the glossopharyngeal nerve or what we call the cranial nerve number 9. This nuclei in the medulla or this nerve in the medulla Relay sensory and motor impulses related to taste, swallowing, and salivation. From the word glosso, no, or pharyngeal, it's more on the buccal mucosa area. So, that's a thing that you need to know about these nerves. The next one is the vagus nerves. This is more on the uh, pharynx and larynx. So in some point, this is part of the gag reflex, but it the, the gag reflex is actually a complex of different nerves acting together. No, uh, why is it significant for us to know about the gag reflex? So yeah, I'll share to you an example. Actually, before when we were talking about the skeletal system, I remember that also during that time, I had a patient. Who were, who was uh, playing no a child, then suddenly he had a fall. I think I mentioned this. I'm not really sure. Then had a fracture. And then earlier this day, or should I say yesterday, he had undergone operation. No? And yeah, the the good thing is that when we opened it up, uh, we realized that the epiphyseal plate was not really damaged. So that's a good thing. Maybe the bone could still grow. No. Again, in this part, the vagus nerves, since I remember the gag reflex, no, but it's one of the nerves that you can evaluate uh, that is responsible for the gag reflex. What, why, why is, what is the significance of this reflex? We check this reflex for patients who have stroke. It could be ischemic or maybe bleeding in the brain for us to see if it's possible that the patient should be given meals because remember despite if off we're sick we still need nutrition uh, the false connotation or false belief of patients are that dextrose is actually everything that they need they thought that if you're being attached to a dextrose uh, it's not even dextrose no iv fluids they call it dextrose <laughs> so if you're attached to a dextrose or iv fluid that you'll be okay and you'll be fine that's not actually true some even some patient will actually go to the er and a dog can you place a dextrose for me because i feel unwell mark really pag sure oy but anyway so that's the thing no uh sometimes we need to give nutritional ways to uh, i mean we need to make sure that the nutritional aspect of the patient is Okay, so we need to consider what should we feed the patient, the meal. Should it be 
uh, should we place a nasogastric tube or something else? So that's the thing that if ever you have stroke or it may be vehicular accident, you need to check for the gag reflex even if the patient is awake for us to know if there is no chance or risk for asphyxiation or the asphyxiation or kanang, uh, the food transfer or is not well swallowed, thus it goes to the lungs causing some trouble or problem or maybe it could even end up to pneumonia if ever the fluids will go to the lungs because there's no gag reflex so there's no synchronicity of the swallowing process or deglutition as we mentioned earlier remember anyway moving forward so another is the accessory nerve or the cranial nerve number 11 but this is more on the cranial portion because uh, this is this fiber is actually part of the vagus nerve but anyway the nuclei of the medulla our origin of the nerve impulses that actually controls the swallowing as well, the accessory nerve, together with the vagus. No, the vagus is quite complex. Later, I'll show it to you. That controls the swallowing, as I mentioned. No, and um, I think that's the thing that we need to know. Uh, this is also part, including the cranial nerve number nine, which we can see uh, during the gag reflex. We'll have a review about this soon. I'll check. If we can insert this another is the hypoglossal or cranial nerve number 12 this part or this is a nerve impulse that control tongue movement during speech and swallowing so this is the one responsible so now we're done with the medulla Later, I'll give you a way for you to remember the different cranial nerves. My Daryl code again. No? <laughs> uh, it's very loud to hear my name. No, uh, I'm the one really saying this. But anyway, let's move on to the pons. The pons lies directly superior, as you mentioned, as you can see on the label. No, unfortunately, there's no red mark. I'm not sure if why, but it lies directly superior to the medulla and anterior to the cere cerebellum. And it is about 2.5 cm or 1 inch long. Like the medulla, the pons consists of both nuclei or different nucleus and tracts. Why is it not moving? I'm trying to click. Okay. So the pons, uh, it means bridge actually. The, that's why I place bridge, you know. So as, as it implies, the pons is a bridge that connects the part of the brain with one another. It's like a gateway. It's like bridge na lang, bridge, basin lahi ng meaning. So, this connects, this connects uh, the different, as I mentioned, the different parts of the brain that provides bundles of axons. And some axons of the pons connect the right and left side of the cerebellum and other parts as of, of the ascending sensory tracts and the descending motor tracts of the brain. So, it it is like a bridge for everybody to travel the nerve impulses okay so in this part there is what we call the part of the there, there are nuclei as well the pontine nuclei this is a ventral region of the pons and a large synaptic relay station consisting of the scattered gray center that's the by, per definition in this area the, the pneumotoxic area is also found in the pons just a nice to know it's more on very quite a deep in the discussion and also the apneustic area is also found in the pons together with the medullary rhythmicity area which is remember during the previous nato nga topic before the pons it helps control the breathing so these three actually uh, helps the breathing process there are also cranial nerves Again, in the brain stem. The first one is the trigeminal nerve. So, or cranial nerve number five. The nuclei of in the pons receive sensory impulses for somatic sensation from and the head of the face provides motor impulses that govern chewing via this nerve. Okay, as labeled there. It is actually divided into three subclassifications the mandibular zone, the maxillary zone, and the ophthalmic zone. Don't worry, I will not ask questions about this. 
No, it's a nice to know. I know because I noticed that you learn along the way. No, you're trying to, to, to study how I make exams, and later you really had great scores. No, that's a good thing. I hope nobody's cheating. I noticed some of you, but still I won't conclude. No, it's bad to judge, but I hope you won't end up cheating. No, I, I tried my best to avoid cheating, but I mean, for for you to avoid cheating. But I I can't really see you personally. I can't really uh, be a police, no, to check you. But I hope you don't do that. Nice to know. I have this a friend of my friend. I don't know if we're really friends. Uh, he he that that my friend is a she. She told me that he, her friend always end up cheating or actually during med school and until now. He didn't even pass the board exam, no. Because if you keep on cheating, you'll rely on the information that you think you can have. Passing is not passing during quizzes is not really our main goal. Our main goal is for you to learn, and it's even better sometimes if we fail. Do I always encourage you to have great, ah, uh, great grades, no, for you to have better choices for your. Uh, career in the future, but still, it's the honesty that you have. No, it's always best. It's not bad to fail. It's actually our way to become better. That's why for those people who failed med school with honesty, I'm more on. I I like them more than the those who didn't even fail and then right now they're having troubles. They're not even a good doctor or so. So because that's how we build our character and that's. Failure could also, as as in this type of profession, no, it will mold you to a to be a better one, and you'll remember that even us, even you, could have failures. Yeah, so much of the drama. But anyway, that's the thing. Next one is the abdul sense or cranial nerve number six. This the nuclei of this in the pons provide motor impulses that controls the eyeball movement via the. The nuclei, as you see, it's more on the eye movement. Remember, maybe I'll ask you about the. Uh, I I hope you remember that the 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 lateral rectus or the superior orbital. Uh, I know I didn't talk about the fissure, no, but anyway, the the different, the cranial nerve number six. I think I also have a mnemonic for you to remember about the nerves. I was not able to share it, but since it's done, maybe you can actually ask me about this. Just remind me so that you'll have ways to remember sooner or later. Because these topics will be redundant, no? Pa ulit ulit, it will be discussed again sooner or later, and again and again and again. So especially for those who are planning to go for a school, if if ever that you really continue med school, no, there are traditional and there are some ah PBL type. If you are in a PBL type, it's best that you have a lot of mnemonics for you to really remember these things because you're on your own. Okay. Anyway, moving forward, facial nerve or the cranial nerve number seven. This part gives sensory impulses for taste and provide motor impulses to the regulate to regulate secretion of the saliva and tears. As you see, no, it's more on there. There's a wide scope. There are different divisions for the zygomatic branch. It's for the tears, and the and then the the sorry, the mandibular branch is more on the muscles as well. There's also another picture for you to know the purpose. No, ah, the parasympathetic nerve, more on the nerve of the salivary glands or so. And then also it's helping in the contraction of muscle for facial expression via. Uh, sending impulses for our in correlations with our emotions. Okay, next one, the last one, the vestibulocochlear nerve. Again, as I mentioned, this is the picture. Ah, uh, the label is on the right, the rightmost part, the vestibular nerve, and the lower part is the auditory nerve. Together, they're quite responsible for the sensory impulse from and provides motor impulse to the vis. So it's more on sensory and motor. To the vestibular apparatus, these nerves convey impulses related to balance and equilibrium as well. We'll be talking about the cochlear area. The cochlear area is the one that is responsible for the balance. 
Uh, I always discuss this to my patient for those who are suffering vertigo. If you have questions as well, maybe uh, you can actually send a message through my Facebook if you or if you want to have consultations. Maybe I'll give you free consultation for every all my students, not just inform me. Free consultations for at least guru once. Aron I napud ko halin no. I mean. <laughs> My consultations will only cost 250 pesos, but I think you have more than that. Anyway, you have free consultations at least once during our class. You can ask, uh, you can have consultations there so that we can evaluate further. But if there are cases that I may not handle, maybe I'll really ask you to be referred or I will refer you to another specialist. Okay? Okay, I don't know everything. Uh, there are some things like, for example, cardiologist, Charo, if you're only talking, for cardiologists, you will only entertain cardio-related problems or in, any concern. So I'm sure that you really should know everything, right? As a family doctor, we cater everybody, so we cannot really focus on one system alone. But there are some subspecialties for uh, family medicine. Like you can even go or con- continue for... Later na, oy. Later na, maybe we'll, we'll talk about this because this is not a career, career orientation subject. Anyway, so remember I told you that there are ways to remember. <laughs> ways to memorize, sorry. So this is my way. Another way. My way. So again, I call this Daryl Code, no? Personally, I just made this up for me to remember. Medulla. How many letters are there in medulla? So M E. D U L, uh, wait lang. I'm counting to confirm. M E D U L L A. So there are seven. So now that's your way to remember the next cranial nerves because in medulla we started with the seven. So there are seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So ayun ay apil lang seven. So those are the cranial nerves in medulla. While on the other hand, pons. How many letters? P O N S. It's four. So, since 4 na ang, mid- ang pawns, you'll have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, that's how I remember. Then, it, your problem is, what if I ask you about the other term? Like, I won't ask you about what cranial nerve number. I'll ask you the trigeminal ba or abducens. So, nice to know. That's my way of remembering. I hope I could make some kind of copyright thing for this, no? For me to really hold the information for me to have extra income. <laughs> But anyway, that's a nice note. Again, uh, I just counted the number of letters for the medulla. And then the next succeeding numbers for almost five, those are the cranial nerves. For you for not for you not to be confused. Then the pawns, there are only four letters. The nerves will be five, six, seven, and eight. I hope it will help. So let's move on and continue to the last one, the midbrain. So now, uh, okay, that's a thing. Midbrain, also known as the mesencephalon, it's about 2.5 cm or 1 inch as well. So the anterior part of the midbrain contains paired bundles of axons known as the cerebral peduncle. Sorry, I'm having asthma again. So again, that's the cerebral peduncle, okay? It's actually bundles of action. The posterior part of the midbrain is called tectum. So there are two superior elevations as you notice. Uh, I'll mark that. There are two superior elevations known as the superior calculi which serves as a reflex center for certain visual activities. So the superior, these colliculi are also responsible for reflexes that govern movements of the head, eyes, trunks, in response to visual stimulus or stimuli, okay? So, more in visions. So, also, to inferior naman. Earlier, it was superior. It's like boobs-like, no? I, when I was remembering or memorizing this during med school, I don't know if we... Ah, yeah, we also have this in nursing. So, it's like I call it the boobs. up, The upper boobs and the lower boobs. I hope I won't be banned in YouTube. But anyway, uh, these are the... The inferior colliculi are part of the auditory pathway as well. I uh, know earlier, the body is one. Okay, no, walang marker, sorry. Overclick it. So, this one is more on the vision or visual stimuli. The next one will be more on the hearing. Okay. 
Am I clear? I don't know if the microphone's facing me all this time. But anyway, I hope I'm clear. I can't re-record this again and again. <laughs> so, where am I? Yeah, the we're talking about the inferior inferior colliculi. So, relaying impulses from the receptors for hearing in the inner ear of the brain. And these two nuclei are also for ref reflex center for the startle reflex, for example, if there are sudden movement of the, uh, it is the sudden movement of the head, eyes, trunk, for example, if someone surprise you or maybe a gunshot, remember there's a reflex, sudden reflex, even if you don't want to look like, uh, like you don't want to look crazy, you know, or they call it stupid, I don't know. Sometimes you can't really stop that reflex from happening if there's a sudden movement. Uh, so we, we react, we startle, uh, that's a term. They are the one responsible. If ever in a, we check this on the babies sooner or later, maybe we'll correlate this with the babies soon. Also another part, if we cut the, the midbrain, there is what we call the substantia nigra. This substantia nigra is claimed to be, uh, based on the studies that they had, if this substantia nigra fades, I think the term it should not be fade, but it it goes lower, no? It is very common to patient with Parkinson's disease. So that's the based on their study. So if there the the if if the question will be what specific changes are visible or is noticed or was noticed for patients with Parkinson's disease is actually the a fading of the substantia, substantia nigra. Also, another picture of the, as you mentioned, there's a substantia nigra. There is also what we call the left and right red nuclei. No, the one in the arrow. I think I have better pictures than X. Like kanina sa. So, this red nuclei looks like reddish based on our cartoon presentation, no? Due to the rich in blood supply, the previous pe picture, it's not red because it's only a cadaver uh, sample. Meaning the person with Parkinson's disease was already butchered. No, no, they, should, they were, no, it's already, he's already dead. Because we cannot remove this part if the patient's still alive. But anyway, so moving forward, this, uh, the red nuclei is termed red because it's red. Red is due to the rich in blood supply and the uh, iron containing pigments in their nu neural or neuron neuronal cell bodies which actually this part is actually helping us in the control in the muscular movements another picture here yeah you can see the red nuclei the substantia neg nigra but i just copied another picture for you to correlate it the real uh, specimen so the, there are only two cranial nerves I, I you can make your own mnemonics for this but it's very easy no so uh in this case for me also not to remember to forget there are only to the trochlear and the facial i no i mean the trochlear and the oculomotor nerve so there are uh mid there are three but then the counting is three then cranial nerve three then four <laughs> for you to remember no so three three four but it's not as as accurate or is it accurate it's as good as the previous one so for you to have, if you really need something to remember you can use that as a, a way to uh, your mnemonic or mnemonics i'm not even sure if it's mnemonics or so no i'm not really sure with the codes i just call it codes so the first one is the trochlear nerve this is the part of the midbrain that provides motor impulses that control movement of the eyeballs and then the other one is the oculomotor nerve, which is, it's, it actually provides impulses to control movement of the eyeballs as well. Which accessory uh, oculomotor provides control in the smooth muscles that regulates constriction of the pupil and changes in shape in the lens via the oculomotor. So I also placed the other picture, the gray one, for you to know where it's located. Okay? So, this will be the last part of our lecture for now. I hope you somehow understand 
uh, a great part of it. The good thing about this lecture or your lecture is you can always replay this. Unfortunately, no for during my part I can't. <laughs> if only I could, no for me to remember what my professor or my teachers had shared. But for you, it's an advantage. So uh, make use of it. Now the good thing about you viewing it is actually I'm happy. You no, know, you can view it because it helps add with the. <laughs> the view of my youtube account as well i realized that along the way but uh, unfortunately i'm not earning anything from from the youtube because i only had 400 i think uh followers is it, is it followers or likers i'm not sure or subscribers no they said when i tried messaging few of the when i asked that youtube they need uh, they said that i need at least at least no at least 1000 followers for me to is it what you call monitorize? I, I don't know if money, it's like to convert your views into money. So, unfortunately, I have only 400, so it's pointless. But I am happy that you're reviewing sometimes. I can see a, oh, another view, another view. Maybe you keep on repeating. And I'm happy as you do that. Anyway, this will be the last part for now. The other half will be, I'll create it. Oh, I'll be I actually started doing it as well, but I'm considering which part should I include. Uh, also, I'm having problems really with breathing. That's why I actually take some pause uh, while I'm recording this. No, because it's really uncomfortable talking, and I I even want I have the urge to cough time to time, but I'm trying to suppress it. No, I'm trying try to stop because I, it's very not comfortable to your eardrums especially for those who are using earphones and headsets so for now this will be the end if you have questions please message me anytime i just hope that you don't expect answers in the middle of the night so you can ask me for you to learn uh, i also wish that you know along the way i realized that it's also best for me to see my students but soon maybe in time no if you have enough time or if ever we so survive i hope you all survive <laughs> this pandemic i'm even worried every day of my life especially padona birthday they said if your if your birthday is coming no you're you're closer to something bad i'm not, i'm not sure if that's really true i think as a doctor we shouldn't believe on such superstitious belief anyway i think that's the end no too much for the chica always Always keep safe, okay? And make sure to take care of your health because without health, you cannot really understand our lecture. Without a good health, you can't become a doctor, especially your dream is, your ultimate dream and goal is to really become a doctor sooner or later, okay? But no matter what or whatever happens, even if you won't achieve the main goal, as long as you're happy, that's the only thing that is significant. That's the best thing. Okay, if ever you become a doctor and then you're not even happy of the achievement uh, achievements that you have because you want to strive harder or higher, it's pointless. So the ultimate goal is to become happy of whatever we have, appreciate the things that you have, and learn to learn to accept that we cannot have it all. Uh, Charna said no. So have a nice day. Thank you.